Hi, this is George, Registered Respiratory Therapist. What I'd like to show you today, or at this point in time, is uh, the differences between a standard oxygen cylinder, a compressed gas cylinder to be more specific, that you have to attach a regulator to, and the grab-and-go variety of cylinders that exist out there. So if we look at the cylinder behind me, just zoom in, this is your typical cylinder that you might see out there that is a cylinder by itself, like this one here. But what we've done is we've attached a regulator to it, an oxygen regulator. Oxygen regulators are meant to go on oxygen cylinders, air regulators on air cylinders, nitrous oxide regulators on nitrous oxide cylinders. They're all, with this type of stem system, safely handled with the correct safety system. And the safety system is pin indexing safety system or the PISS or commonly called, slang called PIS safety system. So the regulator is attached to the cylinder using the pin configuration on the regulator matching with the hole configuration on the stem of the cylinder. You line the regulator up with the stem of the cylinder slide the regulator's pins into the pin holes on the stem, ensure that you've got a proper seal between the inlet of the regulator and the outlet of the stem of the tank, secure it in place with the thumb screw here, and then once you've got it securely in place you can turn the cylinder on, you'll see the pressure in your cylinder affect the regulator and you'll notice the regulator pressure goes up and displays whatever the pressure is inside the tank. So this tank is set, right now it says it's at full, it's got just over 2,000 PSI inside of it. So this is a full cylinder. So this full cylinder will last you a certain amount of time depending on what the flow rate is that you're delivering to the patient. So the faster flow coming out of this, this system going to the patient, the less amount of time the cylinder is going to last and the flow of gas coming out of the system going to the patient is dictated by what you have the flow setting here on this flow meter uh, that it's set to. So if you turn the gas flow up, you can hear the gas coming out, we get a faster flow rate. We'll use the tank up faster. When we turn this down, it's shut off or it comes out, it, the flow gets slower and eventually they'll shut it off. There's many different types of flow meters that are on regulators. Uh, and you'll just have to uh, become familiar with those, with the tech that you have wherever you're working. So this is your typical conve conventional style regulator attached to the cylinder. Now what you also might see out there is something called the grab-and-go. Now the grab-and-go oxygen cylinder essentially is an oxygen compressed gas cylinder just like this one with a slight twist. Instead of you having to add the regulator onto the cylinder. This one already has the regulator incorporated into the design of the cylinder. So if we look at this particular cylinder, it's got a handle here. This is the grab part. You can grab it by the, by the handle and you're good to go with it. You happen to have the flow meter control right over here. And there's a little plus sign here that says plus, a minus sign that says minus. And what that stands for if you turn the dial of this cylinder here, the slow meter control, to the right or the clockwise direction, the speed of gas coming out of the nipple here, or adapter, going to your oxygen tubing and to the item that you have on your patient, it increases. So faster flow rates turn this clockwise. To slow the flow rate down or to turn the cylinder off, you turn it to the left or counterclockwise, you reduce the flow rate and eventually you'll shut the device off. It also happens to have your pressure gauge, and this cylinder is right at 2,000 PSI. Anything at 2,000 and higher is considered to be full. This is a full compressed gas cylinder, and it's good to go. All we'd have to do if we're using this particular cylinder is make sure that we have it in a cart so it's held in there safely, and then simply attach your oxygen tubing to here to deliver the gas flow to your patient via nasal cannula or a simple mask, or if you had to bag your patient or use a manual resuscitator, hook the oxygen tubing up to here, it would then go to your manual resuscitator, and then you'd use your manual resuscitator once you turn it on. So when we turn it on, it would sound something, or look and sound something like this. So right now, I've got this set to 25 liters a minute. 
So the gas is coming out at 25 liters a minute. Fast gas flow, we can use this for hook up to a manual resuscitator and manually ventilate the patient with oxygen. Turn this counterclockwise, we are now turning the flow rate down to eventually the tank will shut off. And you can tell it's off because it says with red background right over here, off. Off. And when you go clockwise again, you get a different flow coming out. So now you can see it's set to two liters a minute. And there's your pressure gauge telling you the contents inside the tank. Now there's also a setting on here if we go far enough. It says auxiliary. What auxiliary indicates is that if you happen to have a situation where you need to hook up, I don't know, a high pressure hose that goes to a ventilator or something like that, you take this cap off of here, there is a DISS oxygen connection. So you can hook up a high pressure hose to this connection and have this tank power a ventilator or any other type of equipment that requires a 50 PSI oxygen source like a high flow blender uh, or something of that nature. Okay, So you can use that as well. So these uh, systems are very useful. They're very handy as is the other regu uh, tank and regulator system. Just going to shut it off. It just has, again, like I said, the regulators incorporated into this design. You don't have to worry about attaching a regulator. Now with the cylinders, we consider, in this area anyways, anything 500 PSI and, and less typically is close to empty. But 500 PSI is still a significantly high pressure and you still need to handle these cylinders with safety. So when they're not in the carts and secured properly, you should lie the cylinder down. If it's, uh, there's an area that you can store them that is, allows the cylinders to stay vertical, they can stay vertical just as long as they're chained to the wall and they're not going to topple over when when uh, bumped into, etc. So proper handling with your cylinders, regardless of what style it is that you have, wherever it is that you work with them. I'll lay this one down, place it there like so. So oxygen cylinder is handled safely, shouldn't be an issue to deal with. But always remember, safety first. When dealing with your patients, always make sure that you are wearing the proper safety equipment that you require the proper PPE, wash your hands before you see them, don gloves or safety glasses, and then whatever else you need to wear for proper protection of yourself and proper protection of the patient when seeing your patients. I didn't have gloves on again, as you can see, but I'm not in a patient environment. But if I was, I'd be certainly wearing gloves as a minimum. Anyways, this has been George. Hope that kind of helps uh, distinguish between your typical oxygen compressed gas cylinder as well as the grab-and-go variety of oxygen compressed gas cylinder. Please let me know what you think of the videos. You can hit like or dislike or leave me any comments. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. And with that, I hope you guys have a great day.